We are Journals Out Loud. I am your lovely and captivating host, Louise Palanker, of wise and wonderful teenagers. We've got Ryan, we've got Lyric, we've got Josh, we've got Maddie. I've been out there we've got singing. Jilly's here. Our social media guru, Harry, walked all the way up the hill, and we live wow. high within the Hollywood Hills, and it was... That was quite a trek, but Harry's here. So if any any social media questions, Harry's here. Please give us a call at 818-531-7171. Talk to our teens. Talk to us. We're going to be weighing in on all kinds of teen issues, but teen issues really are just life issues. So if you're listening to the show and you've ever been a teenager, this show applies to you. And I understand, Josh, you have big (laughs) news. Yeah, yeah. So I've talked on the show a couple times about like how my, my father doesn't really know his history and I've shared a little bit more than I probably should have sometimes about documentation. However, um, so I did Ancestry and 23andMe and they came back this week. Um, So I know what I am and who I am. I'm Greek. I'm Spanish. I am Native American. Yay. It is a great day. And also this morning (laughs) and last night I was matched with, (laughs) right? There was actually 2% unknown. So I'm like, hmm. You just get to Um, pick. I get to pick. I just like. That's a wild card. That's a joker. Um, Anything you like. the, The other half of it is this morning and last night I was biologically matched to other people on the site. Um, so I'm get a secret of the family being my dad. <laughs> so yeah, his dad was a stolen baby. I guess that's <laughs> the short version, right? Yeah, he I was guess. stolen from a Donald Trump rally and uh, <laughs> told to stop wow. crying. He wouldn't oh be at a Donald God. Trump rally. He's half Mexican. <laughs> oh, excellent. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so there's some. Th- there's going to be a movie made about the life of <laughs> the life of Josh and all the family intrigue and all the secrets are going to come out thanks to modern technology. Yes, yeah. lovely. Uh, does anyone else have any announcements? Shout outs. <coughs> Ooh, cough outs. Eric? We used to do shout outs before every show. That was yeah, oh, we had shout outs. Yeah, we would go into the oh app gosh, and we would say who that. wants a shout out. And w- remember when you and Alex, Alex would we used to go at it. Yeah, we got to get Alex back here to have <laughs> another. Wait, Alex. is this whoever could get the most? Sh- yeah, yeah, but I always won. So they would compete yeah. over who could get the Classic. most shout outs. And uh, so yeah, fun, so fun. You could go into the app right now, Harry. Since you're here, I'm going to put you to work. Go into the app and start a thread that says who wants a shout out. Uh, we're live on Journals Out Loud. Join us and who wants a shout out and whatever you want us to shout out we will shout out unless it's just like bananas because it can't be that random it has to be a specific shout out Harambe. so t- so we have some interesting things to discuss today ryan would you read the question that the first question on the page i would love to sure um i have a crush on a guy that i've never talked to crushes in quotation marks first time i saw him was at a party and he's a friend of the guy i have class with he doesn't go to my school though i want to get to know him but i don't know how to approach him i followed him on instagram and he followed me back that was two months ago i don't even know if it's okay for a girl to text first would that make me look desperate another thing he's really popular and well i'm not should i message him and if yes what should i say that was a lot of questions (laughs) yeah it really was (laughs) maddie what are your thoughts um Personally, I mean, this could just be the way that I would handle this. But if you don't know someone that well, maybe approach them in person. Because if I got a message from someone that I didn't know super well, I might be less inclined. Because he might not know who you are just at a party. Just kind of walk up to him, chat, and get to know him a little bit. And then message him later and say, like, hey, I don't know if you remember me from that party. But, you know, I'd like to get to know you. Maybe let's go grab coffee or something. Or I'm in the class with your friends. I don't know. If you know me, but Ryan, what do you think? Yeah, I would just agree with you that start an interaction without having any personal connection or any like relationship prior to that online. He follows you on Instagram, but that's not any real connection online. That's yeah. just that he can see the things you post. Um, when you're saying, I don't know if it's okay for a girl to text first, like I'm guessing you might not have his number. So I don't know. Do you mean like DM him on Instagram I think or something like that? Yeah. I think it's okay. I mean, here's the thing. He probably sees that you're following people that he is. And so he's like, oh, this is like I have I know people that like, oh, they're following my friends. I'll just, you know, follow them. But I don't know. You could be like, hey, I see, you know, you know, my so and so in my class. Like, what's up? But you don't have I I can't guarantee that he'll really say anything. I mean, much back because he doesn't know you. Usually people aren't like, yeah, okay, let's hang out. You know, that's not I don't know. 
So just what are you expecting? John? Yeah, <laughs> and in terms of That's like, <laughs> does it look dead? Ooh, where am I going? <laughs> <laughs> Come back, Josh. <laughs> uh, in terms of it, <laughs> does it look desperate? Um, I really don't think so. I think just talking to somebody is a natural thing. Um, however, going off of what other panelists have said, I think in person would be best, especially if you don't have a relationship. And um, Ryan? Yeah, I would just also say, uh, good to draw the line between like desperation and uh, interest because it's one thing to text someone and say like hey that shows interest to text them every day if they're not responding hey hey what's up hey that's desperate so just making that connection and Jilly yeah I mean I have done something like that before actually I like took a risk and like messaged somebody and it didn't end in anything because I think that if you don't have the foundation in person like that you know as you said it's you're missing a lot but I will say that taking the risk and just kind of like taking that chance was worth it just to kind of gain clarity on the situation. So I think that there is a balance, but I think definitely in person is better. Well, one thing that I would like to pose to you guys and your generation is that whenever I say what Maddie said, <laughs> and Maddie's only 17 years old, so I know that she knows what she's talking about in terms of being a teenager. But whenever I say, well, you should really have this conversation in person, I feel like what I'm getting back is this resistance and this kind of you just don't get it. We don't talk. We type. We're typers. Our people are typers. So, people. and what about all the people that have fallen in love with people they haven't met? They established a relationship with someone they don't know in real life. I think that this case is different because the the online relationships that start just based on online those are people who are kind of looking for each other online and they kind of connect so they're that seekers way. so yeah, that makes they it kind of seek each other and they like find each other that way and where in this situation this is somebody finding somebody online that they met in person so that so she has his instagram but she met him in person so in order for her to establish she she's they've never met she saw him in person. No, she saw him at a party. Like, well, she's, she saw him. Oh, okay, well, yeah, 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 yeah. But she like saw him in person. And that's yeah. how she like, found his Instagram. So for her to like make a relationship with him, she would need to do it in person first. And then, so like our generation are typers, like as you said, mm -hmm. we are. But like in, she would need to like go like, hey, how are you? Then I'll text you later. Does that make sense? Yes, yes, right? yes. Yeah, and I would just also add on to that uh, what you said about those relationships being sought out. I think that there's also another type of relationship that starts online that's uh, built from just the fact that people have a forum with which they can, within which they can communicate to people doing the same activity online. You hear a lot about people who are playing online games together, but that's still a way that they have a connection. These two people at this point have no connection. They have mutual relationships, but they have no connection. Got it. And then onto that idea about resistance that you were mentioning. I just think that it, typing is easier uh, and you can refine what you want to say and you can revise what you want to say up until you've hit the send button. It's not like speaking where it's a lot more challenging for some people and intimidating. And I think that resistance is people just wanting things to be easier than it can be. And talking is something you're going to have to do at one point or another and it's just not always going to be easy. Okay, and then what about the question as to whether or not a girl gets to do the inboxing? Oh, that's fine. I think, why not? I think it's completely yeah. fine. I'd, I'd, like, I mean, if a girl inboxed me, like, I'd be intrigued, honestly. Like, that's, it piqued my interest. It spiked my interest, peak. I don't know. You know what I mean. Yeah, it's bold, not desperate. Like, let's just change up the terms. Like, desperate, like, exactly as Ryan put it, is, like, relentlessly sending someone messages. Mm -hmm. That's desperate, and that's something anybody can do. That's not a gendered term. That's that's something that, you know, like, just sending someone a message first, that's not something that's gendered Someone either. has to do it. Someone has to do it. Exactly. Perfectly acceptable. Very well put. All right. And now, one more thing. What about trying to approach someone who's at a different level of popularity? You know, mm, it's... I think <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. I mean, I think it depends on, like, the person. Like, there are popular people that still see themselves as you know on level ground with people who aren't as popular and people who aren't as popular that see themselves as as popular as the popular people so i don't know i don't think it just depends on the person like this guy might be like totally cool with hanging out with everyone and cool with people of different popularity so i i don't know i think it depends but i don't think it's necessarily that popular people are just popular people and not popular people are not popular people if that makes sense mm -hmm. right? yeah and generally it's a view that's <laughs> constructed by the people around them and not themselves if you have someone who regards themselves as very popular and thinks very highly of themselves that might cause problems but just generally if the outside perspective is that they're popular that really doesn't have an impact on what their tendencies are going to be it's more how they view themselves yeah. maddie 
And it's also about like different like friend group circles, you know what I mean? So if you're, you know, in a very different kind of friend group or if you're often kind of more of a, you know, loner and you kind of prefer to do things by yourself a lot and that's kind of more you and then you try to, you know, be in a relationship or, you know, be friends with somebody who's, you know, very much a people person and they have a very strong or very large group of friends that has, you know, been established for a while, that can be hard too because it may be beyond the popularity and more about just like an established friend group. But, but take having mutual friends as a positive sign right, to begin exactly, with. Right, exactly, yeah. Mm-hmm. You've already also, if, if you go to different schools, he's not going to have people saying to him, why are you talking to her? Because you're not you're not in his circles exactly. of friends. You're yeah. like in separate circles, if that makes any sense. Lyric? So in terms of like what should you message him? I mean, I think like I said before, I think just saying... Uh, yeah, like, you know, so-and-so f- who goes to my school and, um, like, you seem really cool. Well, it's, I don't know. I, yeah. <laughs> you could say, hey, I saw, <laughs> I saw you at the party. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the party. Yeah, you can you. say that. Because that gives it I a bit more, like, that. grounding context. that he does. Yeah. yeah. Context, exactly, that he yeah. kind of has some connection to you. You were at the same place. You saw him. It wasn't just a random message. Yeah. yeah. But and you, you make have mutual really friends. Yeah. Right. And I can't even tell you how many people I know who are grown-ups and married and they kind of went to the same schools ish but weren't in the same groups but they have that similar framework that they identify with having kind of grown up sort of in a parallel I mean this way. is exactly how my aunt and uncle See? met they were Instagram DMs exactly <laughs> yes. yes Instagram DMs yeah um, no but um, my uncle was at a party for his school and one of um, his friend's girlfriends invited his now wife and that's and so she was at a party for his school she didn't go to the same school that all of the people at that party were at and that's how they met did they date since then and then they or did they like no there were parties they were on they saw each other at parties for like i think a year and a half they but, then the, but they dated yeah. since high school and then they got married. No, no, this, this was college. Oh, oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and like, and they had seen each other, and then mm-hmm. I think after like six months they started talking as friends, and then I think like a year after that they started dating. Yeah, it can be years later, right? Yeah, it can that's, be like, no, that's, oh, why, yeah. that's why I was asking. Oh, for we grew up in the yeah, same exactly. town. Who do we know in common? Oh my gosh, Everyone. you were in that class. I didn't. Like, I'm well, sorry, I didn't that talk. Professor, yeah. yeah. No, yeah, that's why. That's why I was asking because I wasn't sure. If yeah, it was yeah, it's pretty common. So anything's possible in life, and but always don't get stuck on one person. And if he doesn't respond, you know, move on. Especially a distant person. Yes, Plenty exactly. Uh, my friend is 14 and having sex with a 17-year-old. I'm not sure what to do. I'm friends with them both. I wonder why both of them know 17-year-olds uh, <laughs> if they're 14. Um, so uh, I'm going to throw to you guys first. Because, you know, the first thing is just danger, danger, danger. And an adult needs to be told. That's my first reaction, but... Because I, because fourteen year olds should not be having sex, so I'm gonna have just an, an immediate knee, knee jerk to that reaction. But what do you think, Lyric? I mean, I think that the most that you can do is either tell an adult or kind of stay out of it. I mean, you can talk to your friend and be like, "Let's weigh out what's going on," but you can't change this situation. But you and should like, talk to the seventeen year old and say, "You can't have sex with a fourteen year old. That's against the law." I think she should talk to her friend. Yeah, because the 17-year-old is not going to respond well to that. And obviously, yeah. like, they don't think they're doing anything wrong. I mean, they might, I mean, but I'm going to assume that they, they n- kind of know they might be, but I don't. Th- it's, they don't see themselves as, like, outright doing anything. Like, they have... Does that kind of make sense? They might have this, like, lingering sense of guilt that might be behind them, but they're not going to be like, oh, yeah, every time I'm doing this, I'm wrong and I'm evil and I'm villainous. And so they're not yeah. going to respond well to being called out. You can tell a parent or you can talk to your friend about it, but that's about all you can do. Who else has a thought about this? Josh. I mean, I know you said if they're both 14, it doesn't really say what this person's asking questions age is. So it could be why are two people talking to a younger person in general, or it could be what you said, what we're talking about so far, which is why are two younger people talking to an older person? I think that also would change the dynamic of how our responses would be. Um, I think for me, if it was like two older people talking to a younger person, what is it about yourselves that would be that you need to talk to a younger person in different grade like i know for myself i had like maybe acquaintances that were freshmen when i was a senior but i never was like hanging out with them so there is because it just is different it's a different level of um consciousness that you both have like one's going to college next year one's like just entering high school figuring out like what's going on so yeah 
um, Ryan? Yeah, no, I had I had a girl ask me out who was a junior when I was a freshman, <laughs> and that's still not even like this big of an age difference. We, but and like in retro, I didn't realize that that's what she was doing at that time. But in retrospect, I now realize that's what it was. And like that's just really weird. It was it was really weird, and I'm glad I didn't like go with her because it was just it would it would have been really weird and wrong. It was just too big of an age gap. Julie. Yeah, I mean, I think that that's again a solid age difference that I think you're very different. And I but I don't know that there's a whole lot to do in that situation because I think that you get defensive. You know, people are going to come at you and attack you. Maddie, do you want? Yeah, I was going to say I think. You know, wh- one of the issues here is that, you know, they're they're both kids. So going after the 17 year old and saying like, you know, hey, you should know better, like, you know, going, you know, being predatory after this 14 year old. That's not really fair to do either, because the 17 year old isn't an adult, you know, with tons of life experience and who should, you know, know all this and should know right from wrong. You know, should something be done? 60, 40. Yes, I think my opinion What should be done? That's the bigger question. And there's so many ways you could go with that. And honestly, I'm not really sure what the best way to go with that is because it's such a delicate situation. It is a delicate situation, but this is exactly how 14-year-olds get pregnant. They're the last people who are having responsible sex. So A, they shouldn't be having sex. And B, they're the least equipped to be having sex responsibly. So it's it's just extremely dangerous. And I know I shouldn't be asking kids to tell, but if you, if she were rolling down a a cliff, you'd run and tell, Maddie? Maybe as a friend, like, because this person says that they're friends with both of these people, mm-hmm. maybe to take, like, the, like, a, a helpful but, like, non-aggressive step would be to say, like, hey, listen, like, this is your choice and I'm, I don't want to report you because I don't feel like that's my place. But, like... If you're making this choice, please do it safely and like, you know, advise them to like educate themselves on how to be safe sexually because I feel like that's the least like aggressive step you can take. Ryan, I think like in in theory, that's a great idea, but I don't think that the impact that'll have is going to be big. Uh, Realistically, if you want to do something, which you should, you need to tell an adult. And I think that's the bottom line. And I think you can politely ask that adult respect your privacy so it doesn't affect your friendship with this person. You can say, hey so-and-so are doing this and I would prefer if, if you brought it up to them that you didn't mention that I'm the one who told you because I don't want it to Im- impact my friends with them but I care about them and I know that there can be consequences and that's it and you put it in the hands of an adult you did your part and you take care of your friend because there are consequences that can come of letting it go on or maybe ask an adult that you know will like kindly explain the consequences of what they're doing to them instead of just plain out like you know angrily reprimanding them because that's not going to help either Mm -hmm. that's true you know what i mean like like uh, like tell an adult that you think is going to help the situation not hurt the situation right it could even be the counselor at school or an anonymous note or something that maybe somebody needs to check on this situation and see if some some sort of intervention can happen uh uh, let's see lyric would you please read the next question yes how do i get my mom to give me money to go out she always complains that i never go out but she never lets me go places and she rarely gives me money. I asked her for a couple bucks to go to the movies, but she said no because she needs it. She's just going to use most of it to buy. (laughs) You've got a few options, uh, but something we say a lot on the show is that to some degree while you're living under your parents' roof, whatever it is that they do is kind of the final answer. So your options are you can discuss with your mom about working out an allowance, a weekly allowance, a biweekly allowance, a monthly allowance, whatever enough for that. Or you can do things that are free. There's a lot of fun things that you can do that are free, and it might kind of be sucky to have to say no when your friends go do something that costs money that you don't have. But like I said at the beginning, to some degree, when you're living under your parents' roof, there's some things that you can't change. So let me ask you guys this question. Are allowances still a thing? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't we hear like as do. much about it as I heard when I was a kid. How yeah. did how did you guys do it, Maddie? Uh, in, in my house, well, I mean... Well, you know my dad. Yeah. For, for the rest of you who do <laughs> don't know my Try dad, explaining this. he's a um, he's an entrepreneur. Yeah, to I put it gently, <laughs> do it your company. <laughs> like that sounds funny. Me, but my it's my true. brother and I started a company. Like I know that s- sounds really. Stu- that's actually what happened, and so that's how I had money when I was a kid. Stuff. Yeah, I've had no since great, I was little. And are you great? Well, see. Yeah. What, what I'm asking is, do you, you know, should kids have to ask every time they? their house into like you know at camp and then camp counselor and then like getting actual internships so i think like and it gives you such worth and like 
feeling like you're doing something every day, you know? So even if it's like babysitting in the neighborhood or it, because then you know that it's not on your parents if she decides or not, doesn't decide to like give you. How can I earn an allowance because she needs the money, needs the money, then you're going to have to find some way that you can still go out with your friends that won't cost money. So I think you, you could, you don't have to go to the movies. You could go shopping and just like go with your friends while they buy things or go to the park or something and have a picnic. I don't know. There's things to do that don't require money that you can still go out with. Get a people. job at the movies. I'll come to see him with you. Wow. Yep. But I don't know how to convey that any more than just understand that she's also dealing with something. It's not a it's not a very conscious choice of hers. Yeah. If you're addicted to tobacco that just yeah, I understand that that's what she's going through too. You get to see more movies if you don't spend your money on cigarettes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Only as a friend. Me and my current girlfriend want to be together and not let her mom get in the way of us. Should I keep trying and finding a way to see each other? Part of it is her mom doesn't like the, how I am two and a half years older than her, which isn't that much. What should I do? And I'm just going to start responding. <laughs> so <laughs> for me, um, yeah, two and a half years older at that age is quite a difference. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, later on in life, it's not that much older, but right now it is. Wait, how old and, are they? Uh, I'm we not don't quite know sure. They're they're probably high this, it sounds they're under 18. Yeah, yeah, so, and at the end of the day, too, why are you moving through siblings in one family? Yeah. Mm, for sure. So, what are you, Alexander Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah <laughs> so it's, it's kind of all uh, just a sticky situation. I think you're better off just finding a new family, trying not to work <laughs> oh through that one. Um, <laughs> and, yeah. Um, Ryan? Yeah, no, I feel like there's a lot of red flags <laughs> for this relationship. Ryan, <laughs> Finding a new Ryan, family. Please no, help me. I was, just, I was just saying, I think that there's a lot of red flags oh for this God. relationship. I don't want to say anything is doomed from the start, but if ever there was a relationship that was, you dated her sister, and something happened there that her mom doesn't really trust your motives anymore. Her, her mom, yeah. And then also, like, her family is not in favor of this relationship, and those two things are a big deal. If her whole family is going to resent you guys being together, it's not a good place to start. You're two, you're two and a half years older, like Josh yeah. said, and just like why? It's why the same family. Plenty it makes of fish there's in the so show. many girls out there. I do Plenty know a guy who dated both siblings and is still like a years with the second one. Twins actually. How does the how Whoa. does the first Whoa. one feel about that? What? She, well, they're okay. fine now, but, <laughs> but it was, it was <laughs> yeah. At first, right? <laughs> yeah. So I mean, in all fairness, like. There are certain situations, but if it were me, I would. That would not. No. 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 I mean, you said okay. twins, right? Twins. Like, so what? how do you know he's not like thinking of the other one like all the time? I he, don't. He, could, he could not even know that. No. Yeah, I'm sure he is because they're <laughs> twins. Like. like oh. <laughs> yeah. Right, no. Honestly, no, just stay away. I have heard of situations where someone first dated one sister. And then got to know that they were a better <laughs> fit with the other sister. And so as long as everyone's okay with it, it's it's not unheard of mm -hmm. in certain towns where it's there's only favorable. the five, five girls people. who live yeah. there. <laughs> right. So it just, it really just depends on how everyone is okay with it. But the, with the mom weighing in here. It sounds like this family is not okay. It sounds like this is not yeah. that circumstance. Yeah, I don't yeah. think that's, that's what's happening here. Like maybe a year off from dating within this gene pool might be the way to go. <laughs> or maybe you went on a few, <laughs> if you went on a few dates with her sister, but it seems like you guys had a real relationship and that's a bit different yeah. too. I yeah. Think. Maybe the mom is single. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> maybe oh, it's possible. No. I'm teasing. There's a third teasing. sister, a grandma, who knows? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Oh. Cousin yeah. is a grandma. Uh, the next question says, I feel sad or angry most of the, the grandma. Okay. I feel sad or angry most of the time, but I don't want to tell anyone. What do I do? So these are the types of questions that make me crazy where the person says, all right, I have this problem. Please don't tell me how to fix it. Cause I'm, <laughs> I don't want to tell because any reasonable answer is unacceptable to me. It's just one sentence, but it says so much, doesn't it, Ryan? Yeah, it does. And you pretty much acknowledge in the question, you know, the answer on how to fix your problem or how to start coping with your problem, but you don't want to do that. Uh, so I have two ideas. You can one, tell someone, but if we're not going to go with that, then you can start learning within yourself certain things that calm you down. It's definitely not fun to be angry or sad all the time. I went through a phase like that. Um, and everyone has different things that whether it calms them down or makes them happy, there are certain songs I like to listen to. I like to play basketball, whatever it is for you, it's going to be different for everyone, but you can start to learn more about yourself and things that calm you down and things that make you feel happier and then start to practice those things and do them more often. Who else has thoughts? I mean, I agree completely, <laughs> well. but I think that, yeah, 
if you don't feel comfortable talking to somebody to find something that makes you feel better is 100 percent valid a lot of the times it is working out like basketball or for me i like to spin um or being with friends listening to music like you just have to feel and that's for everybody you should kind of know that about themselves i think mm-hmm. what i'm wondering is just the way this question is framed it is it, as if there is shame in feeling angry or sad and not wanting anyone to know not understanding that we're all in this human organi- organism together we're all a part of each other and the the only way to heal is collaboratively you know the things that are making you sad or angry could be the people in your life so why why shouldn't they be part of your solution uh, why is that a shameful thing to reveal maddie um i was just gonna say that you know something very similar that you know you know, sadness and anger is not something that is foreign mm-hmm. to every other person sure. that's going to be around you. So sure. y- a lot of people who, you know, you know, initially like feel like they want to like hide sadness and anger, mm-hmm. you know, do it because like they like don't want to tell anyone or like they don't think anyone will understand and, you know, whatever. But like you'd really like people do they get it. They can sympathize. Other people feel sadness and anger like there will be someone who will like maybe not understand because everyone is different and everyone goes through something different and no one can totally you know be like no one will be like oh i totally get it because i hate it when people say that because you know you like nobody else can know you no but there's also kind of like a gift that you give when you take someone into your confidence yeah. you're saying i honor you enough to trust you with my feelings and i also honor you enough to share with you that my feelings are maybe similar to something that you're feeling so let's bond on that it's it's something that we share it's not something that you're supposed to figure out in isolation at all lyric i mean yeah it is hard to admit that you need help from someone Mm -hmm. and i totally definitely get that but i think if you have been trying these different methods of helping it's not that someone's going to totally solve your problems for you and i think that it's great that you want to try to be like autonomous is that the word sure. i don't know yeah. just like yeah like in Harry yourself yes, yes. <laughs> thank Harry you yes. thank you and just like be you know <laughs> talk to someone and they can help you to get tools to help yourself still so it's still helping yourself it's just that sometimes a person can help you add to your toolbox of helping yourself all right let's go to the <laughs> phone and see who's <laughs> calling us hello thanks for calling journals hi hi who's this this is Kava. Thanks for calling. Do you have a question or a comment? I have a comment. Okay. I saw le- a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. And he told me to call back before my surgery. Oh, okay. Oh. Can, can you give us an update? Um, it's on Friday. Okay. Are you feeling okay about it? Yeah. Yeah. It's better. Did everyone? Well, my t- brother wants to talk to you. Okay, let me talk to your brother. Hello. Hello. Um, I want to know how to deal with my sister. How to deal with my stress from my si- from my sister. How to deal with what? Talk a little bit louder, honey. My sister is getting. Well, she's stressed. Oh. My All right. Like, Ryan, can you talk? Th- she's having some surgery, and her she's she's stressed, and his, her brother is worried because his sister's worried. You've had some procedures. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, I had to keep it short. I had uh, I have had some problems with my heart uh, that have developed in the last year, and I'm fine. But there was a time when I thought, and my doctors thought I might not be fine, and it was very scary. Uh, I got very anxious. I started bringing my phone with me everywhere I went, to the shower, to the bathroom, because I was worried that if something happened, I needed to be able to call someone or do something um and i think from my friends what made me the most comfortable was just uh hearing them talk me through it and letting them tell me that it was going to be all right and letting me know that they were there for me because there's really not much you can change until after everything's gone down but you can also just know that uh medicine's very advanced science is very good and you're going to be fine you're going to be safe and uh these doctors have probably done this many times before and you're not the first person they're going to do it on yeah and they're super excited to help you be better they've gone to school for many many years and sacrificed a lot to become really good at surgery is the hardest thing you can do in medicine and so they're they're very as scared as you are they're very excited to help you because they know how much better you're going to be after the surgery 
So just know that everybody here on this planet wants you to be better and that as soon as this is over, you're going to be so relieved and um, there's probably going to be some gifts in the mail. <laughs> I'm just saying, <laughs> when you're a kid, you get you get stuff for going through surgery. They give you like big, big stuff. You know, there may even be uh, some candy involved. I'm not, you know, I can't <laughs> promise anything. Lyric. Yeah, and like we said before, going up to it is really what is the scariest because you're anticipating it and you're thinking about all the worst possible things that can happen. But once, you know, when I had, like I said before, when I had my scar done that sounds weird when I had my mole taken off um I was like really really scared too and I honestly thought I was gonna die I was like so scared but then after when you look back you literally go that was not so bad yeah I mean it's it it ends up being like and and then you next thing you know like you're healed from it and you're like oh Wow. So I think just knowing, okay, we're almost there and it's almost over. Yeah. Like you're almost there and then you can have fun and go back to having like a pretty normal, good life. And thank you too for calling in. We really, really appreciate it. You're helping a lot of people that are going through something. Yeah. Similar. Thank you. Absolutely. All right. Our next question says, I feel sad or angry. Oh, we just, <laughs> I feel sad or angry that I just repeated that question. You should talk to someone <laughs> about uh, it. Jilly, would you like to read the question or did I skip Maddie? Maddie, would you like to read the question that begins the first question on the second page? Sure. It's it's a hefty one. Sure. So, okay. Is oh, there's no name. Oh wait, before you read that, I'm sorry to interrupt, but Trisha will be thrilled for me to say this. Eight one eight five three oh eight eight eight. If you dial eight one eight, hang hit up delete, and delete, 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 <laughs> and then start again, and then eight 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 five three one seven one seven one. We would love to hear your thoughts. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, and please download the Journals Network app. It's free in the iTunes App Store. Maddie? Thank you, Weezy. There's this guy that I like at my job. I can tell he likes me as well, but when another girl talks to him, I feel as if he'll lose interest in me because of her, and it makes me back away just so, I'll av- just so I avoid getting hurt. I, find out th- I found out that we might be hiring this other girl who's really pretty and I immediately thought that if me and this guy were to have something I wouldn't want him to see her and then be disappointed for not being able to be with her instead this happens to be oh this happens with all my guy co-workers they give me so much attention but when they interact with another girl I feel like I'm not good enough how can I stop feeling this way Ryan I think it has nothing to do with him and everything to do with you And so how you can stop feeling that way comes from inside of you and your self-confidence. There's very few people on earth who get to walk into any room and be the most attractive person in that room. So you have to be confident in who you are. It's so hard for me. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I know. Every time you walk in here, at first it made me really self-conscious. I thought people would lose interest in me. I didn't mean to. But I had to learn to embrace who I was. That's, and that's, that's best. That's exactly. That's best. No, you have some wonderful <laughs> qualities, Ron, and your <laughs> eyes are very sparkly. Thank you, Weezy. I appreciate that. <laughs> well, you know, so that's that's that was kind of where I was going with that. It's just it's from a your place. Your eyes are sparkly. Thank you. They I are. Know, this is, <laughs> anyway, uh, just try and that's where I was going try and be confident <laughs> in who you are, um, and know that if you think the guy's into you, he's into you. You know, you don't have to worry. Like if make you know, talk to him, make yourself known, and make yourself a part. Do those of online tests life. that are like, does he like me, Quinn? Don't do that. What <laughs> <are> <laughs> <you> <laughs> See, Ryan, Ryan is Ryan is on to something. Here, because mm-hmm. to me, what's happening is this is a really pretty girl, and so she's wait. Got which one? The girl that wrote the letter. Okay. The girl that wrote the letter is super, super attractive. How do you know? I. This is my sense of it. Oh, Maddie. she's not. I could be completely to wrong. Weezy's okay. beautiful, and she can just pick me. up on other beautiful I'm people. So sorry. <laughs> I vibe oh, it. Okay. I, pretty okay. nose, pretty. Okay. So <laughs> this is I a girl that gets a lot of attention for being pretty, and that sometimes is not the best thing. Because you're not getting enough attention for all your other wonderful qualities, and every other pretty girl is a potential threat. And we don't want you walking through life that way. You're missing out on some amazing friendships if you see people as a potential foe rather than as a potential friend. Jilly, your thoughts? I was going to say the same thing. I think that um, as far as like looks-wise goes, like there's always going to be somebody who's prettier or that you think is prettier. And somebody likes you, like they're not just liking you because you're pretty, they're liking you for hopefully a lot more. So I think that that's important to remember mm-hmm. and to just not let somebody else shake your confidence because everyone's different. And I think, you know, what Yeah, and if you look at a you, guy you know. that you like, it's not just his looks, it's like his coolness or the way he smiles or the way he says things or his sarcasm. Like there's like a million things about a person that aren't just appearance, Maddie. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, think about like, 
you know, this guy that you like, I mean, this question seems to be a little less about like this guy and more about how you're feeling, but you know, I mean like we've all like really liked someone and then you kind of tone everyone else out. You mm-hmm. know, you kind of stop noticing other people when you're really focused on one person. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So when you really like someone and if somebody really likes you, you know, they're not really noticing a lot of what's going on with other people, like attractiveness wise, like they're like radar for like, ooh, like people like yeah. that kind of goes down a lot. And I'm not really sure everything what that else, was, but like we're going to move on. Well, that makes so much yeah. <laughs> like everything else attenuates and you just see this bright and sparkly person that's like. Right. And, and when they walk into a room. You, that's what you're looking at. That's yeah. all you're seeing. You're not looking around for other people, Ryan. Yeah, and I will say, Wheezy, one thing you touched on that you highlighted kind of and extrapolated from what I was saying that I think is important is that you could be making a foe out of someone who could end up being your friend and take the guy out of the equation. This person's going to come to your office and you can have a good or a positive relationship with them and you don't want to preemptively uh, rule out them being your friend just because they're pretty and you think that a guy you're into might also be into them. So Maddie? true. Oh my gosh, yeah. I have a, actually an actual story about Ooh, this. There we my go. Favorite. So <laughs> story time. <laughs> story time. <laughs> Everyone's Story time. So, with Maddie. Uh-huh. Um so my first few like my first week um at college, um I moved into my dorm and I was meeting all my neighbors in my hall and literally my next door neighbor the girl you're actually going to meet next week because she's flying in tomorrow, but I'm going to bring her with me. Mm -hmm. So, um, she's like drop dead beautiful. Like she's stunning. And I was like, I hate this girl (laughs) just, just for being pretty. I hate this girl. So I like befriended her roommate just so I could give her like evil glares. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. So bad. I know. I know. I know how low this is. (laughs) The secret life of girls. I did. I did. But I I was actually like really good friends with her roommate and then her roommate actually transferred. So then we ended up becoming friends and now we're like best, best best friends because her, she ended up having a double single so I spent all my time in her room does she know that that's oh yeah I, so this is not oh, like yeah. news where she's watching <laughs> oh, tonight no. and she's she like no <gasps> no oh, we she knows always this. tell girls what we initially thought of them of after course. we're friends oh yeah I, I, I did, I, I and I was like I was once. like I hated you so much <laughs> just for being prettier than me no yeah so yeah, much yeah, no, I get that yeah <laughs> <laughs> lyric um come back to me <laughs> oh, <laughs> that no, story I just made me like it's so <laughs> it resonates it's a beautiful right story yeah. right? No, and, and like if I you really felt that, if right? you like a guy and like <laughs> if you like a guy and it's before he's told you that he likes you everyone's a potential threat everyone oh, like right. the male woman like you don't well, like yeah, you yeah, don't yeah, want yeah. walking down your street <laughs> but once you know that the guy is into you it's like hi everybody your uber driver Honestly. <laughs> yeah really Do you, did you remember your thoughts yeah I mean, there's different types of pretty. Like, everyone is a different type of pretty. Sure. And so, like, you don't, like, maybe you're blonde, and then this other girl who's going to be coming is, like, a brunette. And, like, so you just, I don't know, that, you too. She was a brunette, I'm just saying. Yeah, so, I mean, there's different types of, like, everyone is a different type of pretty. <laughs> and, and just, like, you don't find some other guy over there attractive, you find this other guy over there attractive. Like, it's, yeah. But it's I will just, it's say, so much, no, it's so that much of beautiful. it though. Did that make sense? Someone yeah, help me out yes. here. Like yes. I really want to mm-hmm. add, and and I think you know you can you can see this in social media when you just look at a picture or when you see a video. Like there's so much about a person that is so three dimensional and how they move and talk and behave and just the way they phrase their sentences. It, it, it that is a component of how attractive they are to you as either a friend or a romantic interest. It's the, it's just not just the surface stuff that that you're so concerned with. It's like all the time that you spend focusing on yourself in the mirror, you could be learning a language or an instrument or, and just becoming more interested in life. And that makes you more interesting. Uh, Ryan. I also just to play the other side of the coin. And I tend to do that a lot. Kind of play devil's yes. advocate here. Mm-hmm. If there's a new pretty girl coming into work, she very, ma- very may well catch his eye and that's okay. It doesn't mean they're just going to get married and yeah, that's it. So. You know, it, uh, like, and think about yourself, put yourself in his shoes there's plenty of circumstances where you're, you're plenty of people have caught your eye around you. It doesn't mean that you're committed to any one person or fa- like falling in love with one person. Yeah, it's that's just, a good point. It's okay to, to look at other people. And Some be people in are just fun to person. look at. Yeah. Yep. And, and, you, and you could just be friends and then you can just keep looking at him all the time and not have to break up with him eventually or, yeah. or, or, or not. I'm just saying, but like still. <laughs> and like w- perpetu- I think perpetual. Once, once you really get that you're only going to marry one person at a time. Yeah. It. Yeah. It in kind of like opens up everyone else in the world as a potential friend, and 
you don't have to have every guy in love with you like because you can only have one that's what you think okay um yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. uh lyric <laughs> um and also you know like he may talk to her and they may become friends but that doesn't necessarily mean that he likes her yeah and so you just need to keep in mind that like just like you might be might be friends with other guys at you know work doesn't mean that you're into them too so you just have to make space for that it doesn't mean that he necessarily likes her it just means that he's being friendly and talking to other people so i think like if you're sure in yourself i think he likes me then you can make more space for okay he's friends with this person Mm -hmm. you know i would just say like don't let it shake your confidence because it's not worth it Mm -hmm. you know just kind of just because if it makes you insecure like that's not a good look for you either um, exactly. So I love how you said is that. The most attractive. What is that saying? I don't know, but there's I no think saying. That's confidence is attractive. Is attractive. Yeah. Confidence <laughs> is attractive. Yeah. There's no saying. It's just that. Yep, that's that's it. And not not, not just Thank confidence, you. but also accepting of other people, because they can feel that negative energy. If you're if you feel threatened by them, they'll think, "Why doesn't she like me?" They won't get that you're jealous. They'll just think, "Oh, what is it about me that she doesn't like?" So. And no one likes mean people in general. Exactly. Like if the guy sees that you're like being relentless to this girl just because she showed up and she's new he's not going to be into that that's that's not nice that's not fun it's not attractive it's not a good look mm-hmm. don't do it so I maddie did. was asking me about this question before the show and so i know a lot of people are going to have questions about this question um it reads if a guy has a lot of sexy girls on facebook even when he has a girlfriend what does that mean so for the sake of discussion <laughs> oh, before God. i throw this out to you for the sake of discussion let's just imagine that she's just kind of like stalking some guy's facebook page (laughs) and she wants to know what kind of a human being he is just for the sake of this discussion and if someone sees read something else into this please let me know and we can adjust accordingly jilly um i think that facebook and tell me if i'm wrong is like everyone that you know or like have met a couple times or like that's like a pool at least for me of people that like i know yeah friends so i think that like that's not you know who i'm friends with on facebook doesn't dictate like i shouldn't unfriend anyone who might be any guys who are you know hot if i have a boyfriend and then like you know what i mean like i don't (laughs) think like that's a way that you should judge people yeah like what if you went to high school with all of them and like they're just happen to be pretty i mean if you take liking a photo oh sorry didn't sorry yeah we're uh, yeah go ahead (laughs) okay okay, cool (laughs) um so for for me i think going off of what you were saying Mm -hmm. i think that some people are that way like Mm -hmm. i i don't friend anybody i haven't personally met at least once however i know a lot of people who just friend any request that comes in um for me it's more about just privacy because of the field of work i'm in um Mm -hmm. and then as well as the for the question itself, like um, the definition of sexy girls, like I think there could, it could go two ways. Like if it's really provocative, Facebooks and your boyfriend's like on there, then why is he friends with them? I would ask. However, if it's just other people that maybe you're threatened by, kind of like with the last question, um, I agree. Like I don't think that just because I have a lot of pretty friends that you have to unfriend them or not be friends with them on Facebook. So right? in terms of framing this question, is this, does this question come from the girlfriend? No. Cause I'm assuming it's coming from another person. That's just looking at the, yeah. at the page. Assuming it was coming from a third party, guy. a third party. So let's yeah. keep it that way. Ryan. Well, I was just going to say Facebook's got a lot of different features and ways you can see what people are up to. So he could very well be liking photos from a page of someone who's famous or from people he doesn't know and friended him or he doesn't know and he friended or people he does know. But kind of like what Josh was saying, like there's there's a lot of different ways this could be happening. So if it's like a provocative photos, but it's from like a model's page in reality, maybe I wouldn't share that on my Facebook. But uh, clicking like literally means I like this and you can't expect him not to like it, you know, like to on, on that basic level. Like, of course, he likes it. He's a guy. It's provocative. It's but I just I think maybe it shows a little bit about what he's not afraid of sharing. If it's people he knows, that might be a little bit of a different circumstance. Maddie. Yeah, I was going to say I'm not super familiar with Facebook, but is it common for like what's on your facebook to be like a direct description of who you are as a person because i was i kind of thinking that it's not really that way okay so Uh, here's what's going on 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 facebook right now because i know that facebook isn't where you guys kind of live uh at the moment what's going on on facebook is a lot of fake profiles are being made and they're being targeted to be friends with people that they think would would click yes uh and they're not real people yeah so they're so every day i'll get purpose though 
I don't know what would happen if I if I uh, approved all these friends or what they would. Sometimes they'll just go. If I accidentally friend someone and then unfriend and like go, oops, I'll see in my in, in my unfiltered messages, hey, pretty, or you know, like I don't know what they, I don't know what they want from me. But I assume that guys are getting the equivalent of what I'm getting, which is they're seeing a lot of sexy girls that are fake profiles, and but and maybe he's friending all of them. The question is, why is he doing that when he has a girlfriend? Why is he Friending people he doesn't really know who just have a sexy photograph in their profile picture. That's what I think is happening here. Lyric. Wait, so I'm confused. We're saying this is from a third party, not the boyfriend and not the girlfriend? Yeah. I think so. We don't really know. That though. doesn't. I feel like that wouldn't make sense. I feel like it definitely would be the girlfriend who's seeing that her boyfriend has like a well, bunch of friends. Could be her friend the, or something like that. The way the like question yeah, is true. worded, though, it says like... If a guy has a lot of sexy girls on Facebook, even when he has a girlfriend, what does that mean? It yeah, she, I mean, yeah, it doesn't sound like she would be the girlfriend. She's not saying she's my boyfriend. Like yeah. She's saying, oh, I have oh, a friend with a problem. She's not yeah, asking so it, it could like be she, her friend. Yeah. It could be her, and she's just asked it that way because she doesn't want to tell us it's her. Yeah. But, that, like, yeah. It, yeah, if you're the girlfriend, then you could definitely ask him, like, do you know these people? Yeah, like, what's up? Yeah, but if you're n- not, I mean, just, like, it could mean two things. You know, it could mean that he is some sort of you know like flirting with a bunch of other girls or it could mean that he just knows these people or like what you said he's just approving like random i don't know well josh so tell me you you are on facebook and you're like a 20 year old male what types of profiles are trying to friend you that aren't people there you can tell it's a fake profile because you click on it and it's like one picture one friends. picture and it's their profile picture and you're the first oh, yeah. person they're friending yeah. when they don't even really know you i mean i've had a few instances not a lot like it sounds like you've had a lot but a I, lot. I mean i have only had like maybe one or two of those i have had though ones that have um been completely fake but only because I've looked at the friends there and they've been all of my friends, but they live across the country. So unless you're me, you wouldn't know someone from Florida that knows someone from Michigan that knows someone from here. So it's like, I don't know if this person's directly trying to get to me or what's happening with that. But I don't friend them. If I don't know it, I just don't friend them. I know a lot of people who do though, like I said in the last one. So Ryan, yeah, I get a lot of them on Instagram. I don't get a lot oh, of yeah, Facebook. Instagram. Mm-hmm. But oh, a ton yeah. of them are like so and so, like sexy lady has requested to follow yeah, you. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And you know, you, cl- you click on the profile, there's like four or five like really provocative images and then it's like link in bio and you you know. But I just mm-hmm. so you know, and they're obviously fake. It's like pretty distinct when they're fake. But I just will say that don't let something like you'll we will be never be able to tell you exactly what's going on, but don't let something like this disrupt a relationship if it's an otherwise good relationship. Be aware of it, but don't go, you know, logging into his Facebook and checking his messages or confronting him. Uh, thinking you know what's going on. If you want to talk to him about it, ask him and be open to whatever he says and just don't let something that th- that's this small expand into a relationship killer. Maddie yeah. or Josh? I would, yeah, I would just ask like you said and I think adding it to another layer of to what I said earlier, I think it also depends on how he's interacting with these sexy people like is he just liking the photos like you said or is he commenting hey sexy and he has a girlfriend right or like, like a it, winky it just faces it depends <laughs> like what his interaction with them is as well so yeah yeah and you can write more if there's more we should know about the situation jilly yeah, would yeah. you like to read the last question sure okay why do I have so much bad luck? I was born early and not as smart as my sisters. I'm the middle child. I always get picked on. I failed my first year of college and had to redo my classes that I failed and now I'm doing better. I got my passport done and thought I had everything I needed, went there and forgot one thing. No matter how careful I am, I'm always doing something wrong. In school, when I hand something in, I look over it so many times and I end up redoing it because I missed one thing. I used to be very depressed and was going to the doctors every two weeks because of how my life was. I'm a lot better now, but I'm the odd one who always has bad luck. I really do. Your thoughts. Ryan. Well, I think that, uh, you know, and you, and you wrote in parentheses at the bottom of the question. No, no, that's just that's no, just for you to read. No, I know. I was saying you wrote that. I like, didn't write that. Oh. It was okay. Jenny well, wrote that. Jenny wrote that. Yeah, it's, Someone, th- it's thoughts for you guys on the panel. That's that's what I was I yeah. was going to bring that up. Is you know what is luck? Is luck real? Mm-hmm. Are some people just unlucky? And I think that you could you could chalk up if you had um, you know if your depression was a result of certain brain chemistry. I think you could chalk that up to lack of you know to bad luck. But the rest of it, uh, there's a lot of things that. I don't want to sound too harsh, but you can take personal responsibility for and failing your classes is not the responsibility of anyone but yourself. I think that there are a lot of circumstances in life that might warrant things going badly and uh, explain that. But at the same time, I don't think that's luck. Um, And I think so. I think that, you know, you've had a pretty 
rough go of things, it seems, up until this point. But I think you can't really judge a person's luck for their life until their entire life has gone by. And you're probably young, and you're just in a rough patch right now. But take responsibility for what you can fix and change. And Josh, what Yeah, I, I agree with what you're saying. And then to add, like, another layer to that, I truly believe that you do think that you have bad luck. However bad luck is more of a mentality so if you think you have bad luck you're going to take actions consistent with someone who's having bad luck so you're going to fail your classes you're going to do that you're going to do this you're going to do all the things that you listed and then you're going to chalk it up to i have bad luck when like he said you're responsible for your life so i think moving forward you have the choice to say i'm not as unlucky as i think and even just saying it will cause you to already act inconsistent with bad luck so um lyric yeah i mean i don't think that there is such thing as luck but i think that some people are born with more issues than others and i mean everyone kind of has their share of stuff that they have to deal with and i think some people do have more of that and some people do have less but i don't think that it is that you are just unlucky i don't think that anyone's just unlucky i think that you can change the way things go for you and sometimes things just don't end up going your way but i don't think that it means that you're unlucky and i think from now on just honestly being like whatever comes my way but that doesn't necessarily mean that i am unlucky it's just the way that things are going you know i mean yeah so that's my take on Maddie. <laughs> it also might help to be a little more forgiving with yourself when bad things are happening that you feel like are bad luck. Because if you're taking on this personal responsibility for your life that is going to make it feel like all of these bad things that are happening are now on you because you are taking on this responsibility. You know, if you like went to the passport office and you forgot that one piece of paper, like that really sucks. Like we've like all <laughs> done stuff like that where now you have to go back and do it all over again. But the apocalypse hasn't come you know you'll you'll be okay your health has not been seriously affected you know your your family's alive if that's what you want you know it's like it's you know it's you know th it's personal th taste things are still mostly okay you know like you have to give yourself forgiveness for the little things that happen that aren't super severe if you're going to take on that big responsibility which might be better for you jilly yeah i mean i think that also it's important to remember that like of bad things that will happen like every day and yeah. i would say if you can try and pay attention to the good things that happen every day then you will start to think that you will have better luck because i think you know you know you get to renew your passport like maybe you're going somewhere to go somewhere exactly yeah. <laughs> you get to leave uh there's so much to be grateful for and it's so easy to I, I will do that to myself to stop myself from that that cycle is because she helped and then some kid I found like was gossiping it was just a crazy day but I met my best friend that day like we connected because of this so there are good things that sometimes come out of this and I know like that was I consider that a lucky day now that's a cool Honestly, story like but and the other thing is that you know don't usually go my way with school and you you know if you have like issue stuff inside of you it can be hard to get normal like remember to get your homework you just need to make room for yourself that things like this might come up and it's okay that you might take a little longer it's okay that you might have to redo things but that's just part of your process yeah and uh, the flip side as a negative is you may have like increased emotional intelligence or you may be more musically inclined or 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 something kind of like a balance of things that we have to deal with and things that are blessings and gifts uh ryan and I, so i'm going to say something and then i'm going to have to clarify it but i'm going to start with just cut your losses take you know take your l's um, and what i mean to be perfect you're going to push yourself to actually fail more than you would have if you were satisfied with your original work so if you're going to review everything you write 500 times and change every little thing about it you might find you haven't finished your paper by the deadline and if you're then rushing to the passport office after you've you know finished your paper and you forget something you're going to have less time for the next paper you have to write and all this stuff so sometimes it's best to say you know what this paper and that's all make sure to strive that like all of these like changes like changing this whole like lifestyle if you are like truly believing you are unlucky changing to believe that like you have control over everything is not going to be easy it is going to be hard and you can do it and you're not going to like back away and just go give up because you will get there yeah i mean i i kind of i agree with what you're saying in some ways for the general people and populations 
that it's not going to be easy. However, it could be. And I, I think that like in some ways, um, it's, it's when you're trying to change a way of lifestyle, it's, you can't try, you just do. And at the same time, you also can't teach someone or teach yourself to do something. You have to discover it. And if you're able to discover it, you can switch immediately into this other area and be this and this in one second to the next. It doesn't have to be a long, drawn out process. I also want to like, so you don't just sit there and like, oh, well, I guess she said it's going to take 10 years. So I'm going to take 10 years. I, I don't know right. that you said 10 years, no, yeah, but yeah, yeah. like, I, I want to make that clear too. It doesn't have to take a long period yeah. of time. Yeah, I like it's the like idea of like, you know, kind of like imparting permission or instruction, like saying, you're not allowed to worry about that. I'm not, it's, <laughs> yeah. you're, it's forbidden. Yeah. You're not allowed yeah. to have that thought. Is yeah. I have Those found things. that to be sometimes freeing when a when a shrink has said that to me like you know just like because they try not to tell you how to think or what to do but but <laughs> if they say you know yeah just don't go there i'm like oh thank you <laughs> and so oh, we're just you. saying you know you're great and so write down all the things you're grateful for and kind of like accentuate all of that and think about all of that and stop seeing yourself as a victim because you're you're here and you won the lottery of life you know you get to have one so that's a blessing thank you all for being with us thank you panel and we will see you next week bye-bye bye, -bye. bye.